y'all welcome back to the channel today we're back to work on the junkyard scout okay so i made a trip to the parts store and autozone came through for me so i've got i think everything i need to get this scout back and running so i got a complete top end gasket kit from felpro then i've got my new cap new rotor new spark plug wires i've got new points condenser four new spark plugs and a brand new ignition coil so hopefully this is everything I need to put this engine back together and get all my ignition working correctly. So uh, I can't wait to start tearing into this, unboxing some stuff, and we'll see what we got here. Okay, so before I start putting all this back together, I'm gonna clean up some of the carbon on these pistons and then uh, the carbon on my valves on the head. And I've noticed this exhaust flange here is super loose. So while I've got easy access, I'm gonna take my angle grinder and just go ahead and snip these bolts off. So check this out, International USA and then a little IH mark on the valve, that's pretty cool. Also while I've got this head off, I thought I'll go ahead and change out these spark plugs. When you swap out spark plugs, it's always a good idea to take an old one and compare it to one of your new ones. And I think these are exactly the same. They're both auto light and check the gap on them. I think the gap's supposed to be 30 on these, but these look like a direct replacement. You just wanna make sure that it doesn't, you know, thread in deeper than the old one and you end up running a piston or something into this, but these look great. all the pistons clean my gasket surface up real good and now um, I've got it turned over to where it's right at top dead center number one and this is a great time to go ahead and check top dead center against your distributor so you can see where the rotor is pointing right here I stick my cap on so right here is going to be my number one cylinder i think i'm not a scout guy i need to research this a little more it could be this is number one but at least i know that when number one cylinder is all the way up that my timing mark is correct so good little uh just take a picture or mark this on your distributor cap probably a good idea to do that before you pull your engine apart but seeing as how mine was stuck okay, so here is my gasket kit Got a brand new head gasket. I believe these are exhaust. These two are for exhaust. I think this is fuel pump. These are my little valve seals. Um, I got one for that little uh, side cover and one of these cork gaskets is for the valve cover. I think these are for that water pump. And then it did come uh, intake and exhaust. I'm very tempted to put this new exhaust gasket on but at the same time, as soon as I start cracking those bolts loose, I'm so scared they're just gonna snap off and then I'm gonna have to drill them all out and tap them and it'll be a nightmare. So I might leave it off for now and change it later. One more good wipe down and went ahead and hit this little side cover with the wire brush and got all that old gasket and Permatex off. I'm gonna clean all this junk out right here and then 
I think we'll be ready to start putting this thing back together. Where my fuel pump is on this thing. And that looks like a whole lot of fun to get to. So I might, well, I've got all this other stuff took off, pull that off, clean it up and see if it's still working. If not, I think this is a prime opportunity to change that out too. I got the old fuel pump off. Go ahead and give her a little clean so you can hear it. I think we're in good shape on that. So I'll give it a clean up and throw her back on there with the new gasket. my head back on head bolts torque down to 90 foot pounds i'm gonna go ahead and throw my push rods back in get the side cover on oil everything and keep going everything on this engine seems to have a little ih stamped into it Okay, so side covers on, got all the bolts in there. Just put my push rods in, I put a little molly lube on them because I gotta change my oil anyways. It's looking good and we're moving right along. So I was cleaning up the hardware, cleaning up this uh, intake, and I found some more little IH logos. Check it out. The bolts that hold on the intake manifold, the majority of the bolts, look, have these little IH castings. That is so cool. A couple of them, it looks like have been changed out. Very cool.
gonna leave the valve cover off for just a minute. You know, turn everything over, make sure everything looks right. Um, I've still got my temperature sensor back there. I'm gonna hook back up. There's a little hose under here that goes to your intake and your side cover down here. I'll hook that back up. Right now though, I'm working on this distributor. So here's my old cap, my new cap. Those look correct. Old kit or old condenser, new condenser. And then here's my old points and my new points. It looks like I've got the right parts to put this back together. The condenser goes right back there points up here and we'll get everything reset everything's looking good I think this is what is called this is what's called a Delco distributor you see it right there a Delco USA I think all these parts I bought um, I kind of knew that going into it look because I think there was also like a motor craft and a maybe a Presto light there's two or three different um, distributors you could get on this thing. So this little screw here, which is a little different than the factory one, it was a flathead. This one is a Allen head, but that is what's gonna set the gap between your points. So I've got all the way up there on a lobe. And this distributor has four lobes, four high points that open and close your points. So by loosening or tightening that screw, you change the gap between your points. So I'm gonna get those set. I've got my new condenser in there, my new points. I've got everything hooked back up. So I just need to set my gap, put my new rotor cap on, put power to the coal and ground. We're getting close. I've got my all my plug wires in. All I've gotta do is jump out down there at the starter, jump that solenoid out, and I might just squirt a little bit of fuel down in there, and we'll just see if we can get this thing to burp over a little bit. Good news, I've got the engine turning over now. I think I've got spark, I'm gonna double check that today. But my big issue right now the starter is just not turning the engine over quick enough. So I'm gonna be pulling the starter off, see if I can get it cleaned up, you know, get it working where I can actually spin the engine over fast enough that maybe it'll fire. Uh, I still gotta put the alternator back on, I've still got the water pump off, valve covers off, but things are looking really good. So I'm gonna get that starter off and see what we can do with that. So I've got a couple wires down there on my solenoid done hook. And then there should be a couple mountain bolts. These old starters usually come off pretty easy. Okay, so you can see there is the top mountain bolt for the starter. And up under, and then up underneath the scout. There's the lower one. So just like I figured, just a couple of mountain bolts, pop them off and we'll have this starter out. So, got the starter bolts out. There's the starter. One big old son of a gun. So I'm gonna take this down to my workbench and see if we can get this thing cleaned up and working a little better. I got the starter broke down it's a little bit dirty a little bit rusty but uh, most of it's not too bad you can see the brushes in here they look really good they might just need a little bit of a clean I think this is my main issue though um, these are just so worn out which is what you see in an old starter like this these are just wore out but I'm gonna go ahead and give everything a good clean make sure everything's got good contact and maybe we can get this old starter working again. So 
So that's cleaning up real nice. It's looking good. I'm gonna hit this just a little bit more. It's got just a little bit more of uh, oxidation I think we can get off of it. It's so thin though. Whew. But I'm gonna keep cleaning this up and we're gonna see what we can do. Well, there you go, all cleaned up. Don't look half bad, does it? Well, I actually ended up going with a reman. I'll show you what happened with that other one when I put it all back together. So let's test this uh, freshly refreshed starter out and see how we did. I think this thing's just wore out. So for less than the cost of rebuilding that old one, I got this remanufactured one for like $60, which is just, I don't even know how you rebuild a starter for $60, but I'm gonna throw this one in. It's just those two bolts, get everything hooked back up and we'll, uh, we'll see if we can get this engine to fire up. You know what I've got here. So my ignition from the coal over to the battery is a piece of the horn wire. And then I've got my handy uh, vice grips here, holding my positive on. I've got a real ground over here to my alternator. Got the valve cover off. I've been turning it over a little bit. You can see everything's primed up real good. Got oil coming up to the head. I got my new starter on down there. So now, uh, give it a little fuel, turn it over. I already checked spark. Timing is uh, still in question, but we'll go ahead and kick her over and see what happens. Alright, so I did what I set out to do by the end of this video. I got the scout to run for just a second, but it ran. So I need to get this old Holly rebuilt, rebuild the carburetor and hook it up to gas and run it off something besides brake clean. But I'm so happy at this point that this engine turned over. It looks like oil's getting up to the head good. It looks like uh, all the push rods are, are pushing up good, all the valves are working good. So Probably the next thing we're gonna see on this scout is rebuilding that carburetor and then we can start tackling this crazy suspension setup that I've got on here right now. So I appreciate y'all checking out this video. I hope y'all enjoyed it and I'll see y'all next time.